Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a very special episode. I am flying over the lunar surface in a lander which is travelling at about one and a half kilometres per second. Now, the smart people out there may have already guessed that this is actually a full-sized moon rather than the one-tenth Kerbal-scaled moon. Therefore, this is, represents a completely new challenge for me. While the surface gravity of the Kerbal's moon is the same as our moon, it is about one-tenth the size, so orbital velocities around uh, our moon are about three times higher. Now, on top of that, I'm used to landing on the regular scaled surface, so I know what the texture now looks like at specific altitudes. This learned knowledge is of course completely out the window now, which is why I'm using Vehicle Orbital Information Display, which are those green numbers at the top of the screen. Anyway, this landing on a simulated airless extraterrestrial body is everyday life for you Kerbal players. However, this otherwise everyday Kerbal spacecraft is actually modelled on a real spacecraft design. It is modelled on the Lunar Lion Project. Now, you may not have heard of the Lunar Lion Project, and the reason for that, it is a very small project. It's a small space probe, but it's a small project. It's an entry to the Google Lunar X Prize, which is a competition to land a spacecraft on the moon and then move about 500 meters sideways across the moon. And the first private organization to do so will get $20 million. Now, if you know your space history, you'll know that there are three countries which have landed vehicles capable of this achievement. There's the Soviet Union, there's the United States, and now, recently, there is China with their lander and rover. When China landed their spacecraft on the moon recently, people were saying, why isn't NASA still doing cool stuff like this? And the reason is... Private organizations are now perfectly capable of doing this with the correct incentives. There are over a dozen entries to the Lunar X Prize. Now, the Lunar Line Project deserves special attention here because they are the only university involved in the challenge. And in fact, a number of their team members are under undergraduates at Penn State University. And, you know, this is something amazing to think of for some players out there. I've had a few people ask, where can you go and study rocket science and get involved in rocket science, rocket science as a career? And, yeah, these guys just came out of the woodwork. Penn State University have a program where you can literally be studying as an undergraduate and building rockets. Real rockets, not the simulated stuff that I muck around with. Now, I said it is a very small project, and it is being done on a very small budget. I mean, they're obviously getting a bunch of talent, a bunch of smart people working on it for free in the form of their students. But, you know, they want to raise money for hardware and things like that, and so they're running a crowdfunding campaign from a Rocket Hub, I believe. So, you know, even if you're not going to go to the university and work on it, which 99% you know, of the people listening to this aren't even interested in that, you can actually take part at various levels, of course, by spending your hard-earned ca earned cash on it. And, of course, many of you might have packed back to a certain other Kickstarter and bought uh, virtual internet spaceships with your hard-earned money. Well, of course, this is a chance to buy a bit of a real spacecraft, and they have incentives to uh, make you join up. Uh, you can put messages on the moon, you can have tweets sent from the moon. They are including with the spacecraft a time capsule, which will uh, contain all sorts of fascinating artifacts and items, will land on the surface of the moon. And because the surface of the moon is essentially a very stable environment, we expect that it'll last maybe 10 million years easily. Uh, perhaps it will be found by some alien species or perhaps by humans 10 million years from now. And to be honest, it'll be very hard to tell the difference if evolution keeps going the way it is. Anyway, earlier today I was able to get on Skype with some of the students who are working on the project and just talk to them about it, and that's the main reason for this video. So you can actually get to see what they're like, who's working on it, who is actually doing for real rocket science. Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a, a very interesting thing. I have two guests from the other side of the country. I have Kara and Ben, or Ben and Kara, depending upon how the microphone, the camera I think flips I'll, things. I'll be Kara today. <laughs> <laughs> Want to be Kara? <laughs> All right, nice to meet you, Scott. We're really excited to be here. Oh yeah, and uh, you are here for a reason. Do you want to elucidate upon that? All right. So Ben and I are from the Penn State Lunar Lion team, and we're one of eighteen teams competing for the Google Lunar X Prize. 
Uh, so what that is is Google has partnered with the XPRIZE Foundation to offer $20 million grand prize to the first private team that can privately funded land a lunar, li lunar lander <laughs> on the surface of the moon and uh, perform 500 meters of displacement. So we are actually the only university-led team competing, and we're really excited to be here. So <laughs> we're getting, it's a real big time for us. We're getting ready for a big crowdfunding campaign and within a couple of years, a launch. So That, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's, I've got to stress this, right? When uh, China just landed their spacecraft and rover on the moon, a lot of people were saying, why isn't America still doing this? And mm. the reason why NASA still isn't doing this is because we're now at the level where, hey, we can ask a university or we can offer a prize and people will come and do it because it's cool. Yeah. Right? We want to put a rover on, we want to put a spacecraft on the moon. We want to play with it and we think that students can do it now. Yeah, the, absolutely. The way we see it is, you know, it's the, the term that gets tossed around that our team leader uses is melee undergrads, something that's made <laughs> to the moon. Right. And I just I love that. So you're not even postgrads, right? You know, <laughs> technically I have yep. more qualifications we're, we're than you. second year college students. So. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, our, our whole team, we have a very diverse mix. We have, you know, great researchers with the Applied Research Lab, but we also have grad students and undergrads, you know, all MBAs. freshmen through seniors and now. beyond. We have, we, have, we have theater majors now. Exactly. We have theater a mix of majors. majors and a mix <laughs> of theater majors. ages. And <laughs> Someone's got to build the mock-ups. <laughs> oh, well, true. Yes, set. So, um, so anyway, yeah, coming back to the actual mission, the, the requirements for the prize is you have to touch down safely and then mm -hmm. perform 500 meters displacement. And that would be conventionally a rover, right? Conventionally, but this is a rather unconventional mission by a lot of accounts. <laughs> so what we have here is we have a model of the lunar Ooh, lion. Oh, marvelous! Is that so 3D printed? Is, <laughs> yep, <Yeah>. yep. <laughs> um, so what's going to happen is it'll come down for landing, fires thrusters, and perform final terminal descent. Now it's going to land. Now once it lands on the moon, normally what would happen is you know a door would pop out, something would lift up, and there'd be a little rover drive out. We decided to take a simpler approach. More parts means more things that can break. More things that can break means a more risky mission. So what we're going to do is, because lunar gravity is less than Earth gravity, so it only takes a few more kilograms of fuel to, to take off again, we're going to fire our thrusters again and hop 500 meters. That we're actually one of the only teams uh, pr planning this kind of this kind yeah. of translation. So The only time this <laughs> has been done on the moon before was an accident on Surveyor. An accident. <laughs> they, their thrusters did not fire on landing, so it moved a bit. <laughs> did, oh, they didn't and, cut. Nope, didn't cut. Right, Sir, wow. I forgot which one. Yeah, I have that and, happen all the time in Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> <laughs> See, NASA has it. You have it. It's just well, that, that was the death of one of my landers in Kerbal. So. <laughs> <laughs> I that I can have landers. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, um, so how much extra fuel? So your vehicle mass is how? How much does a vehicle mass on touchdown? Uh, well, we're still in production and in testing phases right now, so we haven't exactly worked out some of the more finer details. Um, for a reference point, our lunar liner is going to be about the size of a dinner table, so maybe four or, feet, four or five feet diameter. Mm -hmm. um, as for its weight and, and fuel calculations, we yeah. haven't exactly worked out those details yet. But, but you reckon it only takes a few... Within the coming years. Yeah, Excuse me? If you reckon it only takes a few extra kilos of propellant to shift it the 100 Correct. meters or so. Or well, the 500 meters. Extra, few extra kilos, but not too much compared to what it took to get us there. Far less <laughs> than what it would take to add an extra system in a rover. Right, so, right. In this sense, we are saving lots of mass, lots of room, and much simplicity. Yes. It's the same electronics and everything behind keeping a rover steady, keeping excuse me, a lander steady, coming in as it is during a hop. You just change the, traje mm -hmm. the trajectory you want to follow. Right, <laughs> and I can see the simplicity makes a lot of sense uh, if you're an engineer, right? This is, yeah, <laughs> right? This is the, the <laughs> adage of engineering, right? You want to make things as simple as possible. You want to use your tried and tested. And, and if Absolutely. you're not adding an extra system, you're making it far simpler. So you guys are actually undergrad aerospace students, I understand. Correct. Yep. <laughs> Um, and this is the space part rather than the aero because there's no, there's very little uh, atmosphere. Correct. In there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a particle here or there. We're we're all grouped into one major here at Penn State, but uh, yeah. Ben and I and most of the people on our on our team lean more towards the astronautic side of aerospace <laughs> then engineering. Then so. <laughs> yeah. we we appreciate airplanes a lot too. But, yeah, but and they're ugly. With, you, you with be, this okay, so you've but, learned proper, you know, aerospace engineering as well. You learn like aerodynamics and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So you, you but know, then you also have your spacecraft dynamics and astronomics courses mixed in mm -hmm. as well. 
Right. At some point, you know, it's it's just a question of the air density, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's marvelous because I have so many emails all the time from fans who are asking that they're you know they're teenagers they've learned to take spacecraft and Kerbal Space Program all the way to the moon and beyond and you know they they want to take their passion and turn it into a business yeah. they want to turn it into a career and I you know I come from Britain I have no idea about American universities and <laughs> it's cool that I've kind of found you guys have found me or vice versa that you know there is a legitimate course where you can become a rocket yeah. scientist you can live your dream yeah in this <laughs> in case. case yeah well, that's one of the things that we're most excited about with this project yeah. you know we uh, we're a university. We're not a space company. We're an uh, enthusiastic bunch of students volunteering time to work on this project to make this happen because that's what unites us all is a, is a, a big passion. passion for space. And uh, that's something that we hope to really inspire through this project. You know, the, the mission isn't over when we land on the moon and do the no. 500 meters of displacement. Uh, once we, once we finish the, <laughs> <laughs> and once we take a selfie. Uh, we're, but our aim here is we're inspiring students. And we're making space accessible to a group of people that before, it, you know, it was only NASA uh, that had access to space. And, you know, some of the national governments access around the, the world. Moon. I mean, but, yeah. Through this project, a group of undergrads, you know, 19, 18, 19, 20 year olds can also be involved and can we're, have access to something that was impossible. Before. We're doing something that to date only superpowers have done, and only three of them have done it. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. It's yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, anyone can get a satellite into space these days. It's just pay the money, put your CubeSat up there. But the moon, that is a whole different you know, <laughs> yeah. scale of amazing, right? Yeah. It's extremely gratifying to us that the the fourth entity to land on the moon will not only be a private company but a university, and us. but they're by students. So right, yeah, it's not like a, it's people that have you know decades of experience, right? Mm -hmm. We're learning by doing this. Yeah, <laughs> it's a huge learning experience. <laughs> and <laughs> obviously, and uh, yeah, I mean, universities aren't known for having a huge amount of funding, I guess, and that of course leads us to crowdfunding campaign that you guys are running, right? Yeah. We're real excited. We're starting a, a, a big campaign on Monday um, that we're hoping to be able to really open up to the public and tell them a little bit about what we're doing, about our mission, and um, hopefully garner some support for what we're doing. Um, so we're starting this big campaign, and we'll be releasing a bunch of videos soon and some information. We really just want to share a lot of the enthusiasm that we all have for this project and hopefully bring some people in onto yeah. our team. <laughs> let people contribute in, uh, in exactly. many ways yep. uh, you're contributing yeah, yep. cash and then contribute a message to the lander is one of the exactly. options yeah we have a uh, uh, we're still working this out with with PR Ben and I are on the engineering side yeah. so <laughs> we can't tell you some of the more specific details about how the PR campaign works but this info can be found on our website um, www.lunarlion.psu.edu we also have YouTube Facebook Twitter mm -hmm. all that follow it it's mm -hmm. cool. There's some fun stuff on there, and they'll and that'll give you the information about. We have a, a step program in place that you know, depending on how much people who want to help out with our team can contribute to the project, then uh, we'll either you know send a T-shirt or you can even get your name engraved on our lander. And uh, in doing so, we can we're bringing in people from around the world to really be a part of our team by contributing and share in what we're doing here. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. The the thing that always gets me is the the name on the lander. I actually saw a PR film where they said that uh, this message will last, you know, beyond recognizable human history or something like that. And yeah. I think that actually is understating, you know, the, yeah. the fact. Because, you know, human civilization has gone, has become completely unrecognizable to someone that lived a thousand years ago, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> like, this isn't a thousand years. This is going to last there for, like, millions Hundreds of millions. I mean, the models it, for degradation. I mean, it warms my heart when I see people that want to become more than gamers. They want to take this to as far as their careers will take it, really. And and yeah. the, the world is changing to allow them that option. Yeah, and it's something you know we share in common. We're we're trying yeah. to inspire younger people interested in STEM to really take that passion and channel it into an actual career. And we've even now had people <laughs> who have I've said freshmen who started said they came to Penn State because of the Lunar Lion program because they want to get involved. Because yeah, because if you do the aerospace engineering, you there it's there, right? If if you want to yeah. you know, you can there are pe there will be a bunch of people who can actually contribute perhaps by joining yeah. the team. And it's such a diverse group of students. I mean, we we have a lot of 
aerospace engineers, but that's not that's all we have on the project. We have uh, all sorts of engineers, of course, mechanical, electrical. We even have petroleum engineers, and really? uh, yes, we do huh. uh, a lot. But we also have on the other side, we have business, we have finance, we have graphic design, communications, theater, theater a huge, very diverse group of students of varying ages and varying majors. So I mean, it's a multi. Everyone mm -hmm. has this passion, so it's really just an amazing place. And because this, you end up just really clicking with everyone on the team and mm -hmm. getting great work done because we all have the same passion. <laughs> and are dedicated to the same goal here. Uh, that that's marvelous. I mean, and so, you know, I just uh, <laughs> I'm just imagining you know, the other party when you win, right? The oh well, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so are we? <laughs> no, I, but well, actually, yeah. So, what specifically do each of you guys do on the Lunar Line project? I mean, is there anything you can point to and say, yeah, you know, sure. that's my <laughs> business? <laughs> um. So I've been working a lot with the development of the propulsion system. Um. And right now what we're in the phase is we're testing out these little pencil thrusters. If you go on our, on our YouTube channel, you can actually see us testing one. Um, they're from NASA. They're really cool. Uh, about four inches long, half inch in diameter, and 25 pounds of thrust. Um, but designing the whole manifold system, fuel delivery system, oxidizer delivery system to go into actually building a test stand. And then how do you physically put that together and operate it and working through all the little day-to-day -day problems at the test site working on it. Um, it's been really most of my involvement recently. <laughs> that that sounds great. And you, Carl? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I actually have kind of two hands on this project. Uh, on the one side, uh, I focus also on the in propulsion subsystem with Ben, and Ben and I go out to the the high energy testing facility pretty often and help out with the propulsion subsystem, kind of making these tests happen with the NASA thrusters, uh, building the manifold and conducting these tests. But on the other side, I I'm also logistics manager for our team. So I deal a lot with uh, some of the inter-team relations and managing rosters and meeting new people and bringing in new people in this project and so a little bit of dabbling a little bit in the PR side. So uh, yeah. well, you're doing great in the PR right now, I tell you. Great, great. <laughs> because besides the we team, so. we all end up getting a little bit involved in the PR. I mean, yeah. I've been sent out to um, elementary school kind of science fair thing to try to explain our mission to like seven-year-olds, which was pretty interesting. It'd be amazing the questions that a seven-year-old can come up with. It's yeah, true. Absolutely. I, it's I, true. I have a seven year old and a nine year old and you know, they, yep. they do some crazy things. Ask some crazy questions. <laughs> <laughs> but and the, the thrusters that you're working with, I presume these are the ones for the lander, right? So they'll be hypergolic fuels, they'll or... Um These ones are actually they're kind of leading up to we we'll, we'll be developing probably our own rockets actually for it. These okay. are a bit smaller than well, what we need. Well, we've um, had monumental help with corporations yeah. and fun private funding along the way. And uh, one of the biggest contributions we've had, one of them, is uh, this Space Act agreement that we recently yeah. signed with NASA. And they sent us these thrusters. Pretty cool. These are the same thrusters that they're using for attitude control in the Morpheus lander. And they sent us uh, one of them so that we could conduct some testing on it. And the agreement is that we use their thruster to perform our tests and um, find out what goes into it, what kind of thrust we can get out of them. We send them back our data, and they can use that to perfect those thrusters. Well, we can use it also to perfect the same thruster and develop something that yep. uh, will come from, from directly from that thruster and will be actually used on the Lunar Lion. Right, so, something bigger, basically, because you'd need a lot yes, of... <laughs> We'll be scaling it up a little bit. And yeah. also, it's a bi it's a bi propellant. It's not hypergolic. Hmm. Oh, it's a bi. Oh, so, so wait, you, so you're gonna have an ignite an ignition system in there and everything, or the way it works now is <laughs> we have an ignition system right now with um we're we're like running yeah plug. we're running a fuel and oxidizer and spark plug. It's uh, literally an automotive spark plug. Uh, but everything <laughs> we're everything we're doing right now is just testing. You know, things change. You know, we we have we have, we're running tests now, but. Uh, in the future, these things might be yeah. might be moving around. So everything's still up in the air for now. Not literally, unfortunately, but hopefully so. <laughs> up in space. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that that is. I mean, yeah, it just it just is amazing. I you know, I, I I'm lost for words. I'm just you know so impressed that uh, you guys are doing this. We're it, we're, we're real excited. We about don't it. believe we're doing it sometimes too. Like you get out of the lab working on stuff, and you look at the moon, you're like, damn. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we're going there sometime. But, yeah. I mean, this yeah. is all course credit and everything. <laughs> this is like, you know, this is your course credit, right? This is your getting, you know. It's not, though. It's not? This is extra? This is your hobby? This is extra, yeah. This is what we do after class. Awesome! <laughs> yeah. Yes! So many of these students on our team, you know, we're volunteers and we all 
I'll put in the time to do this just because this is what we love. And we are extremely gratified to be a part of a project that means so much for not just, you know, students, not just for our school, but the space industry and what it means to, to, and for humanity <laughs> and for this, for the space industry in general. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're real excited to be here <laughs> and it's, it's so gratifying. You know, last year I came in on this project and I'd never taken an aerospace course in my life. <laughs> well, and um, the repulsion meeting. Was, <laughs> we, we get to this meeting and it was our the head of propulsion, the chief propulsion engineer on the team, Michael Paulicelli, is a grad student here. Um, he said, you know, you got a list of tasks that need to be done. He said, okay, just raise your hand if you want this, this, or this. Well, Kara volunteered to... Oh, I didn't volunteer. He asked. Voluntold. Voluntold. <laughs> I was voluntold. Voluntold <laughs> to work on this propulsion system and try to do the schematic. Well, how many iterations? Oh, man, we're at at least 85 now. 85 plus iterations <laughs> My, later, yeah. we have a functioning test stand. We went from a blank page to running a rocket test program. <laughs> and how many have exploded? Zero, thank you. Yay! Thanks. Uncontrolled. <laughs> so we're, we're still uh, have a good track record for now. But for now. hopefully that'll stay that way. Yeah. That's the yeah. Plan. <laughs> God willing, it'll stay that this way. Yeah, it's one of the key tenants of this uh, this project. Right from the beginning, we're just we're just thrown into you know the thick of things, and it's been here's the rocket an equation. Have fun. Since. Oh right, yeah. Well, rocket equation is the easy part, right? I can understand that. It works on paper. Well, and well, my other role on the team right now is I'm working on developing a, a design spreadsheet in Excel and then we'll throw it to MATLAB later to design a rocket engine for, from going from, well, what's the delta V we want down to, well, what angle do we want to have the inlet being to the, mm-hmm. the, the diverging section of the nozzle. So it gets real, Right, it's, real it's iteration upon that. iteration when you start. Well, then, as luck would have it, we ran into technical problems and the video link went down and I was unable to even say thank you and uh, goodbye to Kara and Ben, who were so gracious to let me talk to them about this. The fundraising, the crowdfunding is going on right now at Rocket Hub. You can find details in the description there. Uh, there's a YouTube channel, there's a Twitter to follow if you're interested in just keeping up with them. And But right now, I need to go off and try to think of a message that will fit into 140 characters which will reflect my wit and wisdom and I will not feel embarrassed about in 10 million years time. I think to be honest that is the hardest thing about getting involved. This is an incredibly exciting project and I'm really glad to see it happening and I will be watching it in the coming months. Until then, I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.